the idea was we want to solve equations. There we go. Let's do this here. And some equations we could solve by hand. Like if I said e to the x equals 10, we could take ln of both sides, and we'd be in business. When we get scenarios where that's not doable, then we have to resort to numerical methods. So it's a second choice. But if you can take a look at the code, what we're doing here, we are doing a fancy job, a nice fancy job, of guessing and checking. So secant says, give me two guesses as to the answer to this equation, two, two guesses at the solution to this equation, A and B. And if they're close enough to the right answer, then this algorithm, and your function's nice in some ways, uh, we don't really go into, most functions are nice, then eventually this, OK, do a calculation, get a new number. Hey, is that closer? Yeah, it is. OK, then let's do another calculation. Do it. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And it'll refine the answer. But it's still guessing and checking. It doesn't really know anything about your function the way you know about a function when you write it on paper. So just keep that in mind. Handy is all get out. I use these all the time, but they're not, uh, they're not as good as solving things by hand if you have the choice. All right. Where were we here? So we did bisection. We did secant. And I just want to bring to your attention again, once we get to here, la, 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 there we go. All right. That these things are simple, right? The actual search here, if you have the idea of a function and you're trying to find where it equals 0, we did a little math on the page, but the actual code is very simple. I'm going to find a slope, f of b minus f of a over a, b minus a. That's a slope that you know from grade 9. Then we're going to do some calculation that says follow that straight line. That's where we did stuff on paper. Get a new value c, and then you just update stuff and you do it again. It's four lines of code. So the idea and the complexity here is very low, but it's a very powerful technique. Bisection, very similar, has a few more lines, but that's just actually has one more line of actual code. There the idea is you have an a and a b, you're going to check in the middle, check the sign of the function am I above or below the target, which is 0, and replace accordingly. So a little bit simpler calculation for C, a little more logic on what you do with it once you've calculated it. You will be expected to produce these on demand uh, in a test, for example, because they're five lines long. <laughs> and the ideas behind them are fairly straightforward. So just to keep you up to date on that. So now we're going to do one last little bit on this topic. And just to scale again, thinking taking a step back and going, OK, I, I can't solve this problem by hand. It's too hard. It, I, I just can't see how to do it by hand. I've got these different techniques that are available to me. And if I talk about how difficult they are to code, in some sense, the loops are the easiest. Bisection and secant are, are sort of medium difficulty. They're basically the same idea, but you have to write a function. You can't just throw a loop in and see what happens. So it's a little more complicated, but not much. The speed of the search, however, and the accuracy that you get back is low for, for loops. If you want to you know, try for our hypothetical example of the trajectory targeting, so what angle launches and lands me at 35 meters, well, I either have to go up by very fine increments, like 0.1 degrees if I want my answer within 0.1, or I have to settle for coarse, but that'll take a long time because there's a lot of 0.1 degrees to check. Or I settle for coarse things and just go by up, up by 1. I get an answer quickly, but it's not that accurate. These two here are both fast and accurate, with the secant being a little faster and accurate. Okay. So except for the marginal benefit that you can maybe just, a loop might come to you and you might search for something with a loop, it's never going to be a better choice in terms of actual practice if you can spend the time to either find or reuse code for the other methods, just to let you know about that. All right. Now, if you think about what we did to get from bisection to secant. Bisection was like, I'm above 0, I'm below 0. I'm above 0, I'm below 0. Hey, I'm going to keep searching to maintain something that's getting closer and closer to 0. Secant was a little more sophisticated. It said, well, what? my function is like a straight line, at least when I get close to the root. So let's take advantage of that idea and use straight line approximations instead. 
How many people remember Taylor polynomials? Raise your hands. OK, most of you do. Good. <laughs> Not everyone. That's sad. Uh, but Taylor polynomials. Hey, constant functions. I can do rules with that. Or, but it gets better if I do a linear approximation. What would be a better approximation still? All together. Constant, then linear, then quadratic. Yeah. So it should not be a huge shocker that someone said, hey, I've got these two techniques now. Let's take a look at quadratic approximations. All right. We're not going to write one of those. If you have to write a quick and dirty, bisection and secant are totally fine. They're very effective. There is one built in to MATLAB, though, that is, a little, that is more advanced, quite frankly. It's more sophisticated. So it's called f0. Find the zero of a function. Very not intuitive name to search for, but very intuitive once you see it. And we're going to look at the help on that. Here we go. Hey, look what it, it finds the roots of a nonlinear function, which is exactly what we're trying to do here. Notice the way you use it, f0, a function, and then a starting value. So again, this guess and check field, there's not going to be any remedy for that. We're going to still have to guess and check. And we have to have a starting point for that guessing. That's what this x0 up here would do for us. But you know, it tries to find a point where the function equals 0. This is exactly what we're doing. What I will scroll down to here is the algorithms. <laughs> oh, get that out of the way. The f0, blah, 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 is a function file. Great. So you wrote a function file for secant. It, they wrote a function file for f0. It used a combination of, wait for it, bisection, <laughs> secant, and an inverse quadratic method. Uh, so it's basically one generation further along. And it has some error checking and some stuff like that, some bound checking. But basically, it's what we've done with a few more bells and whistles thrown on top. Same goal, slightly more sophisticated algorithm. And it's very easy to use. So if you take a look back at our code, let's go back to our last example here. Uh, there we go. This is just solving this root thing. Let me run this one more time. This was finding where oops, delete. this particular exponential function equaled x plus 10. That was the example we drew out in class last time. But the answer is around 5.5. .5, or more accurately, from the secant method, it's about 5.47. So we have one tool that will solve that equation for us, given a starting point. And we can also solve it with f0, if we'd like, by doing almost the same syntax. Uh, it has a bunch of defaults, though, so we actually have to give it fewer inputs, and it'll still work. So this is saying the same thing. Find me a root of the function f somewhere around 2, and see what happens. And we'll run that. And lo and behold, oh, I put a semicolon. <laughs> that didn't help. There we go. We get two answers, and they're both 5.47, so 4.79. So it's doing the same job. It's something we can replace or experiment with. Uh, using instead of secant if we, if we have it available to us. If you don't have MATLAB and you're using another language, you might have to write a secant. If you have MATLAB, you can use F0. Quick note about testing. On a test, I will say, you must do this with a secant. You must write the secant algorithm and then use it. Or it will say, using the method of your choice. Method of your choice can be anything built into MATLAB. So if it says method of your choice and you remember, oh yeah, there's a root finding built into MATLAB. It's called F0. Three lines of one, code, one line of code later, you're ready to go. That's totally fine. You'll see a mark difference. Usually if we say the method of your choice, it's like two or three marks. If it's right secant, it's five or six marks uh, to give you a sense of the scale of the work we're expecting from you. All right, let me pause there for questions or comments. Yeah. Single roots. What happens if there's a double root? Right. Uh, sorry, single roots in the sense that there's only one root, or that it just touches. It's a double root in that sense. Touches, yeah. Right. So let me paraphrase the question here. All these algorithms work great on a single or a simple root. Both are expressions we use for that. Life gets a little harder, and you can imagine why when you see the algorithms. If we're looking for a, I'm just touching the axis here, like an x squared, a quadratic that just touches. These are incredibly hard to find. I'm not going to ask you to find any of them, so right off the bat, I'll simplify your life there. But if you just want to think about it for one second, bisection works because I pick one side of the root where the function's positive. 
one side of the function where the root's negative, and then somewhere in between there will be a root. Because if it's continuous, I go to from positive to negative somewhere. What's the problem with that on this guy? <laughs> it's positive everywhere except right at the root. Exactly. I, can't buy, I can't use bisection to search for this root. There is no crossing of the axis. And honestly, it doesn't have to be a perfect, double, a perfect ideal root there. Even if it just goes under for a second and comes back, so it's two roots that are really close together, for bisection, you have to find that little, little interval where it does go negative, and then by the time you've done that, you've basically found your root anyway. So bisection doesn't work as well on these. Uh, Newton's method will, or Newton's method, secant method will work. Secant will work. It works more slowly. It turns out it's a harder thing to search for. And F0 will work on this as well less reliably, less consistently. And you actually have little round off error things too, right? Your computer only has so much accuracy. So if it, in theory, just touches zero, well, maybe when you calculate values with you know, exponentials and signs, it actually ends up being a little bit above zero, uh, like 10 to the minus 16 or something. And then your root finding has a problem because it can't actually find a zero. There is no zero in your computer. So there's some issues there. Is that the kind of yeah, thing yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. On the plus side, secant and F0 will do their best to find a root uh, in, even in that more complicated scenario.